Nate Composing Gloves here. I'm wearing a hat. Today, we're going to be talking about upwards compression and expansion. They are different. We will exp I'll explain where I draw the differences in a little bit because some people are like, they're like the same thing. And yeah, sort of, um, I'll explain why I think they're separate things. So I'm going to assume you know what compression is and you're pretty familiar with compression. You understand, you know, ratios, attack, release, that whole deal. Now let's talk about these, uh, this idea of upwards compression. So on a compressor, right, you're, you're turning down the volume whenever it gets too loud. Upwards compression is the other way around. Whenever it gets too soft, you turn it up. So, so you achieve a similar result, but using a different method. So before it's too loud, you turn it down and then you turn the whole thing up afterwards, right? Now you're just going to turn stuff up. So in the way it's kind of good, cause now you don't have that last, you know, turn everything back up stage, but this becomes outrageously powerful when you get into multi-band expansion. And first let's do single band upwards compression. And I say expansion and compression sort of entertain interchangeably here because they're, they're kind of the same thing. So we know in a compressor, right, in Maximus, you can draw in your own thing, right? So we'd set a ratio by putting it here, right? Our, our, we're setting our threshold, and then we could change our ratio by just uh, manipulating this line, right? So I'm specifically using Maximus because the same, because I can make the distinction between expansion and compression easier. So here I've set my, my threshold and my ratio has essentially been set by how I sort of do this line. It's kind of cool because I can have something like this. In a regular compressor, right, it'd be more like this. Like it would just go down like the whole way. Like you just have these points and they go down and then you can, we can add these additional points. Well, th this technically isn't like compression compression because most compressors don't do this. Like, oh, compress, 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 boom, no more compression. Like that's weird. That normally doesn't happen. So in the same way that this is considered compression is the same way upwards compression compression is considered expansion. So let's look at expansion, right? So expansion, when things get too soft, like let's say, or a signal, like, oh, I have our, I have a signal we're going to play with. So I have our signal coming in, right? And when it gets down here, like, oh no, that's too soft. I want it to be louder. Well, we could just simply add a point and say, hey, this area of the spectrum get louder. And then after here, just leave it alone. So only expand up to this range. And then after that, treat it like like normal so you see that we've made it a lot more even we could even we could even raise this up a little bit and bring it up like so we can make it less extreme by doing something like this we can make it even a little more transparent by maybe uh, bringing it in a little bit like this and so we have a lot of control over it. it's one of the cool things about maximus is you can do all this control if we let's open up something that's a little more uh, a straightforward and in one way, I suppose. And let's go, it's Trash 2. So Trash 2 has this dynamics module in it. And in it, da, 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 let's turn that off. We have, we're able to do ratios in the other direction. So you see, it's actually bringing up. It looks very similar to Maximus. So here's our chart, right? As we bring it up, it does something like this. So it's bringing the signals that were down here and we can change this by moving our, our threshold. It's bringing signals that were very soft and bring them up. There's an issue though when you do envelopes like this because when the sound turns off, you're gonna get this sort of clicky sound. And I'm not sure if I've not tested Trash 2 on this, but Maximus does it. So let's just say like we do something like this. Upward expand um, that dot right there. Bring that up. You hear that little, like, click, 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 click. That's the sound going on and off. That's so annoying. That's why I don't like um, upwards compression in this, in this, in this deal. But as you can see here, that's like annoying. This last part of the envelope. So it's way nicer to have it right there, down there, and then you expand upwards like this. Because then this last little critical part of the envelope where the sound goes away, it's no longer an issue. That's been left alone. You're not expanding the very start and ends of notes, which is really cool. Okay, so we understand that's pretty self-explanatory. Like you bring stuff up and as it reaches up, you're basically bringing the volume up as it goes. Now let's jump into something a little more dense. So, so what's the difference, Mr. Gloves, from upwards compression and expansion? Well, it's the same way, like I said earlier, this is considered compression. But what happens when our envelope reaches here, it suddenly gets expanded. And, and you could call this upwards compression, but it's not really because it follows a, this, like this envelope that just doesn't exist in a regular compressor, like doesn't happen. So when you get something like this, this is like not really a compression or an expander. It's like something in the middle. And so that's like kind of weird right there. But what if we had something like this, right? We had, oh, expansion stage here, right? Expand that and then, oh, expand this too. 
Like that's that's strange. Okay, that you're not gonna get something quite like this from a regular upwards compression. Like it ain't happening. So this is this is like that's a strange thing. So what we've done here is it's almost like this is this is where I draw the line essentially. And this is expansion at this point. So we play it. It's also important to note here that when we have something like upwards compression like so. We also have an attack and a release setting, just like we would on anything else. If we open up the trash again, whoops, this we're gonna come to this in a second. If we open up trash, we can see here that we also have an attack and release. So this is just like any other compressor setting, except for now we're just turning the volume up as opposed to down. You'll see this all over my projects as a sound design move. I, I just prefer this method. It's why I grab Maximus so much, especially with the different bands. I can do like frequency specific. So that's really, really cool. Something uh, to note when you do this is you can get sort of, you can get very unusual transient responses when you do this. So if you think about it, if we're turning the volume up or down, if before turning the volume down ruined our transients, well, when you turn the volume up more, you're going to be emphasizing the transients in a different way because turning, removing them, was one thing and letting them go through when with compression was one thing but when you have the ability to change like the transit so when the transient comes in and it gets remapped based on how loud it is at different stages of the compressor so like right when it first comes in, it's going to have to pass through this envelope and it's going to thus be affected by the shape depending on your attack setting very quickly and this will actually allow you to shape the transient so there's really cool options and now if you take that and blow it up to these different uh, frequency areas you can really get some interesting dynamic responses out of it no pun intended because you know you could go after your low end and that might not be the transient but it may have a different part of the envelope so you could you could change the frequencies down there why the mids that are responsible for the snap you could shape these differently and all sorts of things and then, of course, we've learned now that, you know, most of the time I'm doing some form of upwards compression, but I like being super specific. But if I, any, if I do anything that's sort of strange that I can't, I just can't do and with regular what's regarded as upwards compression. So now it's termed expansion in my book. All right, now let's look at isotope. Okay, and in here we have what's called the dynamic EQ. It's really cool. We're going to talk about it as we get going. But it's, uh, now that you understand compression, be very simple. You can take, you can basically say, hey, compress these frequencies by this amount. And you can set uh, a threshold saying, oh, this is what we're going to set our threshold at. And then when frequencies come in here, it'll turn them down. But what's really cool is you can actually flip it over and do inverse mode. So this is like the same thing as Maximus, only now it's going to expand in a much more visual, I mean, more clear way, I think. But as far as seeing the envelope, I don't think it's as friendly as Maximus. So, and that's that. If you have any questions, let me know. We're going to look at some examples of this in a mix in the next video and have. A blessed day.